So you want to buy a portable sawmill, or at least a transportable sawmill. Let's talk about it. Make sure you stay to the end, and I'll bottom line it all for you. So the first thing we'll talk about is, what do you plan on milling? Now that may sound like a stupid question, but it totally depends in your area. Some places have been uh, cut before, and you know it just depends on the size trees and the species you have. In my area, big, large trees are not as common. We will every now and then get a, a larger tree like the one here in this video. And you have to take that in consideration if it's something you want to, you want to tackle. This particular clip has nothing to do with the video whatsoever. I just thought y'all might want to see a tree fall. Truthfully, this is one of the trees we harvested for the sawmill. Let me talk about this one phenomenon and it will happen. I had no idea when I bought my sawmill that this was going to occur, but people will give you trees. I mean it. They will give you trees. They will call you up and say, hey, come get my trees. Some of these trees are big, so take that into consideration. It's a sad day when you have to uh, turn down a log that's too big for your meal. The next thing on the list is do you want it mobile or movable? Some mills like mine are completely mobile. You drive it into place, put the outriggers down, and it's ready to start milling. Others, you have to put it together on site. These are where you need to figure out what your needs are. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is why do you want a mill? Is it for a hobby? Is it for income? Or is it for a little bit of both? Or are you unsure? Hopefully we can answer these questions by the end of this video. Let's talk about the different types of sawmills. The chainsaw mill is very, very portable, but it also is very slow in production. You are limited by the size of the motor on the chainsaw and the, how much pressure you can push through. Now there is uh, step ups like the Norwood uh, chainsaw mill, but as it's more complicated, it is less portable. Not to say that it's not portable, it is portable. You can, you can load this up in a car and put the, the rack on top of the roof and, and uh, head out. But uh, it's still, the more complicated they become, the, the less portable they are. I would only recommend a chainsaw mill if portability is a key issue. Let me clarify that. You can get these portable chainsaw mills way back in the woods where you can't get an automobile. The next on the list is what they call a swing blade uh, circular saw. It swings both left and right, and you, it's a really fast saw for making dimensional lumber. However, it's limited in how big the sawmill can cut, how, much, uh, how big a timber it can cut by the dimension of the blade. This is one of the reasons that it is not really great for slabbing or trying to make big timbers. Having said that, I don't think there's any sawmill any faster in making dimensional lumber. It just rips through dimensional lumber really fast. It is not as portable as a wheeled bandsaw mill, but it still can be torn down and taken places and set up fairly quickly. Bandsaw mills come both stationary and portable. And what I mean by portable, they have wheels on them and the trailers are DOT approved to go down the, the interstates and, and the roadways. The unique thing to bandsaw mills is most manufacturers create a kit that you can add to at any time in the future and make your bandsaw mill totally portable. Another perk to bandsaw mills is that the blade is very thin, so you waste a lot less lumber than a chainsaw mill or even the swing blade type circular saw. Bandsaw type sawmill manufacturers make sawmills that will take a, just about any type log that you can put through. That means you can cut wide slabs and also depending on how long you, you purchase your sawmill, you can cut wide slabs that are extremely long. Now that we went through the three main portable type sawmills, let's get to the uh, elephant in the room. I would love to be able to bench press 315 pounds again, but I don't believe that's going to be in my cards. And what I mean to say is I'm not a young buck anymore. And sawmilling is tough, heavy work. Is it rewarding? Absolutely, it's rewarding. But it's still tough and heavy, 
but there are some sawmills that offer convenience that make it a little bit easier. So let's talk about those. At this point, I can't rotate it backwards. I have to always go this way. So, and it makes it not as much fun with a manual meal. All right, so here we go. There we are. External tools such as a tractor and hydraulics and grapple really can curtail some of your workload. Still, no matter what type of meal you have, some things are going to have to be handled by hand to move it off. Most bandsaw mills have add-ons for the manuals that makes it a little bit easier, such as cranes and the ability to roll a log up onto the sawmill using that crane and also using that crane to turn over the log. So there are some manual opportunities to help out. Each manufacturer adds different apparatuses to help move logs around manually. And there are so many different types of apparatuses that I can't, I can't cover it all in one video. You'd have to look at each individual line and go from there. The next thing we could talk about, but I'm probably gonna stop is at the hydraulic type uh, attachments and accessories. I think once we do that, we cross over to a threshold of an amateur pro or pro series sawmill, and the price is gonna really reflect it as, as well. Here's a great example of how a band sawmill excels over other type sawmills. This log is crooked, but my wife wanted a slab uh, made out of this crooked log. Well, you can do that with a bandsaw mill and like your sling blade type circular saws, they won't do it. And it's really be troublesome to do with a chainsaw mill as well. Let's talk about the bare necessity of tools that you're gonna need at your sawmill. First, you're gonna need a tape measure. You're gonna need a chainsaw because there's gonna be times that you're gonna get jammed up where you can't do anything but cut your way out. You're gonna need a cant hook so you can turn the logs over. You're gonna need a way to put the log on the mill, whether it be the winching system with a ramp or a tractor and a grapple. Now let's talk about one thing that's probably overlooked on every new sawmill purchase, is what kind of blades can you get for your sawmill? A lot of times we just buy the sawmill and think that all Sawmill blades are the same. Well, they're not. There's different pitch blades for different type woods. And can you get that blade uh, from uh, a, the manufacturer that makes it or from a, an alternate manufacturer that just makes blades? So that's something to think about. Do, what kind of blade choices do you have and what are the cost? You need to think about that in your purchasing of a sawmill. One more thing to think about on blades is how are you gonna sharpen them? Each blade lasts probably four to five times on a sharpening. Are you gonna send it off? How much is that gonna cost? Or are you gonna buy a blade sharpener when you buy your sawmill? Those are some of the other things that you have to think about and additional cost. So the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is like warranty work and service and support. You wanna have manufacturer support. Uh, I would recommend that you call each manufacturer's warranty hotline before you purchase the meal and see if they answer. I can tell you that's one of the reasons I went with Frontier, with it, which is part of the Norwood family, is because I call and a lot of times I'll get Trevor or I'll get uh, Kelly. And it's, you know, it's always a person. I call and get a person just right away. When you buy your new sawmill, you're gonna and you, you're gonna be a new sawyer. You're new to this. You're gonna have questions, and you're gonna need support from the manufacturer. And when you're calling that hotline, make sure that the person behind the phone actually has touched the sawmill before. And in my case, uh, each one of the people that I have talked to have probably cut thousands of a board foot. So that's a that's a thing that makes me feel good about my purchase. I promise you I would bottom line it. Well, here's the bottom line. Buy as much meal as you can for the best price that you can afford. 
So there's so many types of sawmills, variations of sawmills, different brands of sawmills, different different types of sawmills within the same brand of sawmill. So there's no way I can cover everything that you need to know in any video. So I hope this helps you in your decision making uh, process. A at least it will give you enough information to at least ask the right questions.